Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. We are Hida, Jenny, Siwen and Ingrid. Now that spring is becoming summer in the Southern Hemisphere, we might remember that in the summer of 2019, major bushfire emergencies in Australia captured international attention. It seemed as if the whole country was on fire. Climate change and long-term water shortages became part of the discussion. So our topic now is water scarcity. Outside of Australia, we're going to look at a country where water scarcity is even more serious. That country is India. What is water scarcity? It means that there is a shortage of water because of physical reasons such as drought, or because of inadequate infrastructure, or economic pressures. Let's look at some facts. Firstly, water scarcity can occur even in places where there's plenty of fresh water and rainfall. Secondly, 70% of the world is covered by salty water. Only 2.5% of the world's water is available as surface water. The remaining fresh water is in the atmosphere, underground or in solid form as ice. Thirdly, about 1.2 billion people, that's a fifth of the world's population, live in areas where physically water is scarce. Fourthly, across the globe, more than 10% of people consume food that's been grown with water contaminated with chemicals or pathogens. If you imagine all the world's water as filling a four litre jug, the fresh water available for use would amount to only about one tablespoon. So what's happening in India? Here, water scarcity is an ongoing crisis. In 2019, it was estimated that 200,000 people died as a direct result of inadequate or unsafe water supply. India is ranked 13 on the list of countries with extremely high water scarcity. 600 million people here face high to extreme water stress. 75% of households do not have drinking water on the premises. 84% of rural households do not have piped water access. It's not just the water quantity, 70% of the water is contaminated. India is currently ranked 120th among 122 countries in the Water Quality Index. Over 21% of the country's diseases are water related. 500 children under the age of five die from diarrhea each day in India. However, India is not actually a water deficit country. In earlier times, with a lower population and less water consumption, water shortage was not normal. Recent water shortages are, for the most part, not caused by natural disasters. They're due to these six factors. A lack of government planning for infrastructure projects, a rapidly growing population, currently almost 1.4 billion people. Drought does play a part, but there is also overexploitation of groundwater. Moreover, there are different patterns of water use in developing countries compared to developed nations. Developed countries such as in Europe use approximately 30% of their water for agriculture, while in developing countries such as in Africa and India, agriculture accounts for 80 to 90% of water use. This is why water efficient agricultural methods are so important in India. One might think that using newspapers or magazine articles in local languages might be a convenient way to spread water related knowledge and take home tips among people. And surely there are resources in local areas? So why does it seem that there is still inefficient use of water? There is still a greater need for water literacy, understanding and practicing water conservation. Although many written resources are available, that does not necessarily mean that the messages are received. Let's look at the state of Maharashtra with a population of approximately 125 million people. 75% of the population speak Marathi and other major languages such as Hindi and Gujarati are also widely spoken. There are several languages with smaller numbers of speakers in areas close to the state borders. Maharashtra is economically well developed in comparison to the rest of India. It has the highest GDP of all the states and its capital, Mumbai, is the centre of the Bollywood movie industry. But life is not so glamorous for everyone. Over half the population live in rural areas 
where around 5% of the villagers don't have internet connectivity. Census data shows that in urban areas, approximately 89% of residents were identified as literate. But there's a clear gender division within this statistic. More than 92% of males were reported as literate, but less than 76% of females. And when you look at rural areas, you can see that overall and by gender, literacy rates are lower than in cities. Naturally, you might wonder why there's such a strong gender difference. Discriminatory social attitudes play a part, and water scarcity is a part of this. Collecting water is believed to be a women's and girls' job. Rural women may have to walk a long way to collect water. This daily chore may take up so much of their time that girls don't attend school regularly, if at all, and women may not have enough time to do other work. We may assume that online resources are the most accessible kind. There are certainly training programs in Hindi and other regional languages for farmers. There is expert advice available on water management, agricultural techniques, conservation and water protection. But in India, English is often the preferred language for science, technology and informed discussion. However, using English is much more a phenomenon of wealthy city dwellers. A recent survey showed that only 3% of rural dwellers and less than 2% of people classed as poor could speak English. Scientific and technical information in English needs to be translated, which demands time and resources. So rural people may be excluded from participating in informed discussions. India's system of government operates on four levels, national, state, district and local. Small-scale projects are planned and implemented by village councils. Water safety information coming through official organisations tends to be well accepted, but transport and communications infrastructure impact the speed of information flow. This devolved system also demands much of people's multilingual skills. And, as we've seen with regard to gender roles and literacy rates, cultural practices impact who is able to participate in this information sharing. The non-government sector is very active in India, with many organisations helping to facilitate local self-help groups and rural development projects. Socially marginalised groups can participate freely in this space. This work at the grassroots level, where people sit down and talk to each other face to face, helps to ensure that information and actions are aligned with the needs of the people most affected. Participatory processes take much longer than simply checking information on a phone, but by giving people agency, they are likely to lead to long-term success. Six principles of effective crisis and risk communication have been identified. These are to be first, to be right, to be credible, to be empathetic, to be respectful and to promote action. Because of the significant disparities in access to social goods, a pragmatic approach to communications is being taken. There are vast quantities of human capital, including highly educated specialists, multilingualism, and the capacity for good social organization right down to grassroots level. In terms of effective crisis and risk communication, there is also ample evidence of being right, credible, and action-oriented. Full social participation as an indicator of empathy and respect, and the speed of communications are, however, ongoing challenges.